Hi there and welcome to another video. Today I'm talking about a very popular saturation and distortion plugin, the HG2 Black Box. It is used by recording engineers, mixing engineers, mastering engineers. It's used by everyone and some even claim that the sound rivals that of the hardware unit. The design philosophy behind the hardware unit and the software plugin was to create something that didn't exist at the time. A box that could sculpt the vibe, the harmonics, the tonal distortion and just overall bring a warmer sound and bring the transients forwards. These are quite a lot of words for a plugin that has essentially four knobs. So let's check what each knob does and how to get the most out of the plugin. Now moving into the box, here is the HG2 black box plugin itself. It's very straightforward. You go from left to right, dialing in the saturation, panto, triode saturation, air amount and the output. But if it was this easy, there would not be this video. So let's delve deeper into what exactly is happening under the hood and how to get the most out of it. Starting off with the first section, the saturation section. There are actually a couple of knobs that are relevant here. The low flat high switch, the saturation amount, the in and out to enable the saturation and the alt tube for a, just a slightly different sound. Now on the screen is a flow diagram of the signal path. As you can see, there are three paths, a bypass path, a main signal path and another parallel path. This parallel path is the saturation knob. So it's actually an additional parallel saturation signal path on top or feeding into the pentode and triode saturation. This parallel saturation signal path can be changed slightly. The alt tube, if you enable it, gives a bit more aggressive sound. Could be nice for the source signal you are working with. Now onto the low flat and high signal switch. This determines the bandwidth that goes through to the main signal path. Low means you cut out the highs at around 2k. Flat is a neutral EQ position and high is a high pass above 2k. In practical application, low, the low switch can be used to get, get more oomph to the sound. Flat just means overall more of everything and high gives a more higher presence, a sharper sound to the overall signal. Already we started off a bit more complex than you would imagine from just seeing the four knobs. I will get back to how to use the plugin best in the next section on the workflow, so stay tuned for that one. Next up in the signal path are the pentode and triode saturation tubes. I wish I could tell you exactly how the pentode and how the triode influence the sound, but I simply cannot. Even the manual from the hardware unit and the software plugin are in disagreement with each other. One calls the pantode a bit more round, the other one calls it a bit more aggressive. So I guess it really depends on your ears and the source signal most of all. Also, how hard you drive the saturation. What I can say, however, is that the pantode and the triode are in series. Meaning, if you drive the pantode really hard, you hit the triode harder as well. So there is in the workflow a balance to be found between the pentode, how much you drive the triode. We will again come back to that a bit later. Next is the air amount. The air amount comes after the signal path of the saturation, also in series. What it does is it boosts around 10k and gives the sound a sharper, brighter sound as air mode would suggest. You enable it by clicking the air knob and it turns blue and then it's enabled. Moving on, there is the output knob, which just simply adjusts the output volume. Just below the output is a bypass knob. The bypass knob is exactly the same as this knob here on the ribbon, this on off switch here, and it just bypasses the entire plugin. Lastly, we have a small metering section. The volume level in the middle will display either the RMS or the average levels or PPM, the peak levels. Then very lastly, there is the standard plugin alliance ribbon with undo buttons. Versions you can compare, copy paste to copy paste from A to B, B to C, etc. A reset knob, which resets the entire plugin. A calibration knob for a darker, normal or brighter sound. I think it's particularly interesting to try this out on this plugin because it's a saturation. If you have a too bright sound, 
you can maybe darken it a little bit. Then there is the density knob, definitely recommended to play around with this. Next are the input and the mix. The input just adjusts the input gain and the mix lets you actually use the plugin in parallel. With the basics now out of the way, how do we actually get the most out of this plugin? The first thing is to get the neutral settings. I would like to remind you there are no zero settings. If you load the plugin, it always does something, but these neutral settings give you the best starting position. That is the saturation off, so the in out knob not lighting blue, the pentode at 12 o'clock, the triode at around 10 or 11 o'clock, the air band off, and the output also at 12 o'clock. Now we have a template to work with. If your sound is already distorting, try to use the input gain reduction or just to lower the volume of the signal coming into the plugin in another way. Now for the actual way to approach this plugin. First, we want to use the pentode saturation. Turn up the pentode saturation until you have a nice sound. Then we reduce the triode to level match the volume. You go back and forth until you have the sound you want. Next, we do the same trick, but with the triode and the output. So we start increasing the triode until we have the sound we want. Use the output volume, decrease it to level match the signal. Now we can turn on and off the plugin to have a very nice sound comparison to hear what we actually did and if we still like it. If we like it, now we can go to fine tuning our sound. We can play around with the saturation. Turn down the saturation all the way, enable it and just start playing around, dialing in more and more parallel saturation. If you want more final controls, you can switch to low, flat and high settings or the alt tubes. To remind you, the low switch gives you more oomph, flat an overall more rounder, more balanced saturation and the high gives more high end sparkle and presence. The alt tube is said to be more aggressive, so that would be good for guitars or something like that. Next, we can dial in the air amount. Turn it to zero, enable it and just dial in whatever you want to get that high end sizzle. It's of course entirely possible that the saturation and the air amount just do too much and you do not want it on your signal. And very lastly, something the plugin can do, which the hardware cannot do, is as I mentioned in the plugin alliance ribbon. You can adjust the color, density and the mix. I would say happy mixing because this is all it takes to really get the most out of the HD2 black box. I for sure will be using it on my master bus and I would love to hear in the comments how you use this plugin. Thank you for watching. This was it for this time and I will see you in the next one.